Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in the previous video we talked about how we can register using a JWT token well, how we can register and get the JWT token back in this video I'm going to show you how we can log in so that's going to be a quicker one than the previous one because we're going to reuse a lot of code but first and foremost we will need um, to copy this because I'm lazy and we're going to change some things so this will be login instead of register and this likewise so user login request here and this doesn't exist so I'm gonna go ahead and create this request and this will have exactly the same properties as this so let's close this I'm also gonna be fixing an issue with the register uh, endpoint at the end it has to do with email validation currently we're not enforcing uh, emails we're gonna enforce them in a bit so Instead of register async, we're going to have login async. This method doesn't exist, so we're going to add it. And it basically follows the exact same uh, pattern in terms of method body. We, again, we're going to have an authentication result here. Let me just make these names more beautiful. And I'm going to be implementing this method in derived classes. Now, this code here, which gives me back the token, will be reused so let me just extract this to a method called generate authentication result for user yeah why not we're getting a user we getting an authentication result this could could be split in smaller pieces like um yeah, fine. It's okay. It's exactly what we want it to be. So let's just copy this and put it above the private method. And what can we reuse here? Because all we need to do really is log in our users. So we're going to actually use a lot of this code. Um, first, I'm going to change this existing user to just user. And then instead of checking if it doesn't exist, so sorry, if it does exist, we're going to check if this user doesn't exist. And we're just going to say user does not exist. Now we don't need any of this code, so we're going to just throw it away. And hopefully this user will be authenticated, so we're going to reuse this object here. And all I'm going to do is say var equals to user has valid password equals await. And we're going to use a nice method called check password async. So we just pass the user and the password and it will and that's the raw text password and it will do all the checks for us and make sure that the user is actually um, the user has a valid password so if user doesn't have a valid password then return we just copy this again I'm lazy Uh, and we might not want to specify why this failed, but again, for development purposes, I'm going to say that user password combination is wrong. But in a realistic scenario with GDPR and all that around, you might not want to let your users know why this failed to protect your users. And uh, that's all you have to do for the login. I just realized that I was editing the registration method. So... Let me just undo all that. Yes, and paste everything here. I have to change this to async. And that's it. So if I go back to the identity controller, I'm using the login method. This generates a JWT. And um, I can just run this. Let me just make sure it builds. So we have our login and our registration endpoints. If you remember from the previous video, I made an account called Nick. Uh, I don't remember what the name was. I think it was Nick at test.com. And then the password was Nick1234 exclamation mark. So if I execute this, yes, it's a valid um, account. Again, if this was wrong and I execute, I'm gonna get a user password combination is wrong. And if the user didn't exist, I would get a user doesn't exist. 
So that all works. And now I have the JWT. Again, I'm not authorized. So I'm going to say bear. And if I'm not authorized, let's just try to create a post to see that. Nix uh, of post and execute. Again, unauthorized. I cannot actually do this. But if I say bearer and paste this and I authorize myself, then execute and I created the post successfully and then I can go ahead and see my post here as one of all the posts. So logging in is that simple. What I wanted to go ahead and do is go in the request for registration and add an attribute on the email. And this attribute is the email address attribute. Later, we're going to see what um, fluent validation is but for now I'm just gonna go with the default MVC validator so once I add this I can go to my identity controller in the registration uh, endpoint and say if model state is not valid and then validation is being driven by many things one of them is the attributes that uh, my um, my model has. So if this isn't a valid email address, the model state will be invalid with an error that MVC will generate for me. So I can get those errors by saying model state values and then I can select errors. And then from the errors, um, which, what form do they have? Are they just strings? No, they're collections. So I have to select uh, the error messages. And what I'll do is I'm going to actually use that to say return bad request, new of failed response, and then errors equals to this, which it doesn't really like because, oh, select many. <laughs> and this should work. So all our errors should be here. And if I build this and run this, if I go here and try to register with something that is not an email, the email field is not a valid email address. But when this is an email, then the password is invalid. Let's make sure that all of this works. Make one, two, three, four, exclamation mark. And it all works and I am registered as you can see here. If I run this again, all three accounts are registered. And because I have sorted passwords, even though all of these three accounts have the same exact password, they look different and that protects us. So that's it for this video. Leave a like if you like it, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Keep coding.